Well, hello, I'm David Freeman with Is That Really in the Bible? Question, are you a religious person or are you a spiritual person? Now, the definition of a religious person is a person sitting in church thinking about fishing. A spiritual person is a person fishing thinking about God. And that's the difference between the two. Now, how would I define a religious person? Well, generally, I would think of a person who likes going to church, uh, involved in the Christian holidays, uh, active in church, maybe the children's program, maybe helping out here, there, and yonder. Uh, when it's convenient, talking about God. Um, I would say reads their Bible daily, but I, I think that's not true. Uh, most of the time they do not uh, read their Bibles, nor do they bring their Bibles to church. It's not an issue. It's just an issue of, not an issue of personal study. It's more an issue of just being spoon-fed, sort of like someone drills a hole, the preacher drills a hole in your head and pops a funnel in there and pours in whatever he wants to pour in. That's more about what it's, it's like. I, very few people prove things for themselves, you know, don't believe me, believe your Bible, and, uh, you know, if I can't prove it from the Bible, don't believe me. Well, what is a spiritual person? Well, I'm going to give you a definition of what a spiritual person is. It is a person that has the Spirit of God inside of them and is led by the leadership of that Spirit. That's what a spiritual person is. In other words, the person must have the indwelling presence of the Spirit of God. And there is a way that you receive the Spirit of God. You don't just receive the Spirit of God because you just feel like it or you raise your hand and, yeah, I accept Jesus. No, there's a way to go about receiving the Spirit of God. Romans 8 and verse 9 says this. It says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. Now, let me clarify something here. In other words, if you have the Spirit of God, you are no longer ruled by the lust of the flesh. Now, only you can personally know the answer to that question of what rules you, what controls you, what you cannot quit, whatever it may be. Only you can answer that question. But this says, you're no longer, if you have the Spirit of God, you're no longer ruled by the lust of the flesh. If so be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now there's the biggest two-letter word in the English language. If the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Now that is such an absolute statement there that you shouldn't let that slip by you. If any man have not the Spirit of God, Christ, he's none of his. There is no connection with God void of the Holy Spirit. Now, this is trickery. This is a little bit tricky here in that you can be deeply religious without having the Spirit of God. In other words, you can go to church, you can sing in the choir, you can lead services, you can do a lot of things without having the Spirit of God. You can be deeply religious, but you cannot be a spiritual person void of the Spirit of God.